For today's episode of New England Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places, we begin in beautiful Vermont. This is my first time here. I am super excited to be here today. First time in Vermont and it's absolutely beautiful. Loving it so far. We've got great weather too. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time. I am Tampa J. And today I'm traveling home to Florida. No, I'm not driving all the way home. I'm actually driving to Connecticut, Hartford. That's where I'm boarding a plane to head back to Florida. This is my last day of this short, brief trip up here to New England. So I thought along the way we would continue the New England roadside attractions and abandoned places journey. Don't think we're gonna get into a lot of abandoned stuff today. To be honest with you, I didn't get a chance to scope out any abandoned places, but we also love the roadside attractions, the oddities, and the cool and unique things along the highways of America. So we're gonna feature that. I hope you enjoy the journey. We're starting here in Windsor, right here on Route 5. There's something up on the road. Windsor is the birthplace of Vermont. I saw a sign back there. It said founded in 1777. So very cool, I didn't know that. So welcome to the birthplace of Vermont and welcome to the video. I hope you enjoy the tour today. Thanks for always joining me, my friends. Vermont is beautiful and there's much ahead. You know, I just mentioned the intro, no abandoned places today, but I just passed by this beauty. Look at this old barn. Old New England barn. Just sitting by the road here in Windsor. Notice there's a no trespassing sign. We're not gonna approach it. We're not gonna go in. I just had to show you this. This thing is over 200 years old. Also, there's some more buildings back there. That's pretty sick. This is sitting across from an old brick house too. Right over there. Oh yeah, very picturesque as far as old barn. That's amazing. Okay, gonna head to Windsor. Just down the way is the first stop. And at the top of the hill as I'm leaving this place, there's a sign, welcome to Windsor, birthplace of Vermont. Okay, I'm gonna make a pit stop. I'm gonna create a whole entire video at my next stop. I don't wanna give it away, but I feel that this subject matter needs its own entire video. So I just wanna make note of it here in this one, that I'm making two videos today. And that one will be out shortly. Actually, it, it probably already came out. I'll probably put that one out first. <laughs> welcome to the future. Beautiful towns. And welcome to the birthplace of Vermont, right here. Here's the sign before the little town. Pretty quiet, dog barking. And just right up to the right, beyond the town here, the main street, there's a historic plaque and a home. Check this out. Constitution House. Windsor, settled in 1764, became the became the political center of Upper Connecticut River Valley. Here the Constitution of the Free Independent State of Vermont was adopted at the Tavern of Elijah West on July 8, 1777. Wow, this Constitution was the first to prohibit slavery and establish universal manhood suffrage. Vermont was an independent republic until 1791 when it was admitted into the Union as the 14th state. So right here is where that declaration was signed. The old Constitution House. That's amazing. So yeah, it wasn't originally a part of the 13 colonies until after the war it was added. It wasn't added until after the war and this is where the declaration of 1777 when it actually became an independent nation, really, Vermont. I learned something new right here where it took place. I heard it from the horse's mouth. I think that that works. <laughs> and this is beautiful, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. That's amazing. History, I love it. A lot of old homes, older than I've ever seen. That one though, that's Victoria, that's late 1800s. Beautiful church. Wow. Look at that. Okay, this is a cool town. We might have to make this more of the video. 
You never know what's gonna happen until you get in your car and you just get out there, folks. There's so much to see right here in this little town. Holy crap, flamingos! I found flamingos in Vermont. I was turning around right here, I made a wrong turn, and there they are. Oh, amazing. Flamingos. And here's the old Windsor School. Now an apartment building. Just strolling by it. Large building. It's got to be at least 150 years old. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'd call this a little happy accident. I thought I was near the town of where the second video I'm filming today. I thought I near where that location was. I thought I was near in that town, but I, I'm, I went the opposite direction. That was an accident, but hey, I'm just gonna roll with it because this town's beautiful and we've already found the birthplace of Vermont here and I saw some other stuff, so let's check it out. Now I know the winters must be harsh up here, but I say it's totally worth it if this is the type of weather they deal with in the summer and the beauty and the green, I'll tell you why. If green is your favorite color, it'd be hard to live in a desert. Oh yeah, I love this place. This building, this three-story building right here, it's a coffee shop. And on the corner, this park is called Two Tree Sculpture Garden. And look at that, there's two trees out there. I don't know if you're supposed to walk out there. Check it out. I'm sure they used to sit in an old building here. Yeah, it says please keep off the lawn there. Or please keep the dogs off. But yeah, just two trees between these two buildings. And I think I found Mayberry, AKA Main Street. Check this out. Look at that old Coke sign there. Windsor Pizza Chef. Ice cold Coca-Cola sold here. I wonder if they sell by the slice. I am kind of hungry. I love that sign. And look at this. Bob's Barber Shop. Not Floyd's Barber shop bobs established 1947 shout out to chris the girl's dad bob hey check it out <laughs> that's cool isn't it i think it's closed today let's peek in the window wonder what it looks like in here exactly like you would picture it look at that that's amazing look at the old barber chair there black and white checkered floor and me there's a mirror that's me way back there you see me this place is cool. It's almost, yeah, they're, they're selling a lot of other stuff in there. It's a, it's a novelty. They're even selling local farm fresh eggs. That sounds delicious. You go for some fresh eggs. And look at this. About town. Little event center. Announcements. What's going on. That's cool. And also some historical signage. Points the way back to the Constitutional House, which we just were. Also, there's a welcome center over here. I think it's down the hill. Okay, there's a train station back there. This is a nice park here. Little monument. Check this guy out. World War II Memorial. That's cool. Yeah, soldier here. It says to honor Windsor residents who served in all wars, not just World War II, but that's definitely a World War II soldier, the M1 Garin or grand, as they say, dead giveaway. Yummy, yummy Chinese house right across the street here. Okay, this is America right here. Some beautiful stuff. I like this town. Also, the corner back there where I parked, up the hill there, that's where I parked. Okay, walking down the hill to the Windsor train station. Whoa, look at this. Halfway down the hill, Williamson heating and cooling. Old warehouse building. This is neato. And I said I wasn't gonna see any abandoned things today. I was wrong, and I'm glad. Looks like an old banquet hall, banquets. I have a banquet in there. All right, close your eyes. Picture a train station. Did you get it? I got the same thing. There it is. Wow. That's beautiful. Windsor South. Okay, so this is the Amtrak line. Being from Florida, there are a few active train stations. Not very many, but you don't see one out in the middle of nowhere like this. This is cool. I bet you can take that all the way to New York City, if I had to guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to show you. So, yeah, that, that is actually the Welcome Center. 
This right here is the actual train station. This is all they need anymore. It's just a platform. This is where you load on the train, just this little spot. I remember Chris the Girl and I were out near Tombstone, Arizona, and we saw an Amtrak station that was just a dirt lot, and people just like kind of walked up a hill and got on and off the train. That was pretty crazy. But yeah, these, these things will stop anywhere. And I'm gonna walk back up that hill, see a couple more things. I just wanted to show you out beyond the tracks. Very old buildings over here. Looks like people are still living in them. That one, wow, that one looks like, that one's definitely seen better days. Looks like it's gonna fall in. Oh wow, I stand corrected. I thought the train station was the Welcome Center. It's right here. Waypoint Welcome Center, Windsor. It's just this old shack. Kind of tucked away back here. See, train station. Hill we came down, abandoned old warehouse building. Windsor Welcome Station. Oh wow, beautiful garden over here along the way. This is pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go in. Oh, okay, so there's like a private event in there. It's not really open. There's just like a private event in there. You can rent out the Welcome Center. Okay, heading back to Main Street. Gonna go up here. There's a couple of buildings. All right, I don't know what it is yet. I'm coming up on it. But absolutely beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six column house to the right. And also an old tavern there called Friends and Company. That is so old. That is, that perhaps might be from the 1700s. That's an old bar. Clothing, jewelry, gifts. This is not a bar anymore. Oh, that's sad, but it definitely used to be, right? That had to be a tavern. That's gotta be. Busy road, a lot of motorcycles. Nice little scenic highway. I can understand why everyone's out on a joyride. Windsor House, established 1838. And it's not open, but there is some history on the porch and some rocking chairs. Visit the American Precision Museum, a National Historic Landmark, and learn how Windsor revolutionized industry through innovation. It was in Windsor that the concept of creating and replicating tools and equipment with interchangeable parts, wow, the forefront to mass production was developed in Windsor. It is also home to the two national engineering landmarks Cornish Windsor Covered Bridge, oh yeah. And the Ascutney Mill Dam, okay. Oh yes, I believe the longest covered bridge is in Windsor and I forgot about that. There's a picture right there. Windsor House Polka, look at this. This history over to the right. That is the bar to the left and there's the house built in 1838 and this is an old flyer, Windsor House. Look at that, J.H. Simmons, proprietor of the house. Old advertisement and some history here that this has been Windsor's premier site for hospitality since the early 1800s. Captain Joseph Peets built a coffee house here in 1801 in the Connecticut River Turnpike, a toll road that ran from Bellow Falls to Thetford, Vermont. He uh, hosted Windsor residents, travelers, and such notables as President James Monroe in 1817, and it just goes on. And this photograph taken in the 1800s, actually early 1900s, it's of a community band, and it's of the Windsor Post Office, which is right there. That photograph was taken right across the street. Notice the windows over here? That's right there. Also, there's another photograph of it there too. Windsor draped many of its buildings and patriotic bunting for the visit of the former U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt on June 9th, 1911. Old Teddy Roosevelt was here. Rough and ready. Just like, uh, hey, he's been to Tampa. And another spot on this trip. A couple days ago, I was in downtown Hartford at uh, City Hall, Old City Hall, and I saw one of these plates. I don't know if I put it in the video, but uh, Lafayette was here, his tour, June 28th, 1825, was escorted to Pete's Hotel where he was welcomed to the state by the governor, Cornelius Van Ness. Wow, so there you go. 
General Lafayette was here. And we say Lafayette back in Indiana. I don't know if it's Lafitte here. <laughs> That's sick. Okay, so I'm two hours from Hartford, Connecticut Airport. And it is, let's see, what time is it? 1.34, I should be there a couple hours before my takeoff, which is at nine o'clock. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to film mostly in Vermont just because things keep popping up and this is, I'm just bouncing off what's coming at me and I'm having a good time here and there's so much to see. We're gonna go check out the country's oldest, longest wooden covered bridge, which so happens to be here on the east side of town. I was just talking to a gentleman back there, actually west side of town. I was talking to a gentleman back there and he pointed me the right direction. Boston Dreams, sports gallery, coffee house, okay. Car's right there. I'm gonna grab some coffee. And there's a lot of Red Sox sports memorabilia in this little coffee shop. David Ortiz, 2004 American League Champions. Also, Jonathan Applevon, 2007 World Champions. The 1986 Championship Banner. And look at this over here the Cornish Windsor Covered Bridge. And that's where we're going next. And just like that, iced coffee. And it's delicious, very delicious. When I was growing up, we called caramel, caramel. Being from Indiana, that's how we say caramel, caramel. However you say it, wherever you say it, does it really matter? I got a caramel coffee. No joke, that's how we say it in Indiana. When I started working at Starbucks, everyone always corrected me when I said it, and so now, I naturally say caramel, just because I was corrected so much. But when I go home to Indiana and I order a caramel donut or a caramel donut at Jack's Donuts, they look at me kind of funny. So I, I kind of have to remember to say caramel. The Windsor Diner. Whoa, that's cool. Old school fire station. Not a fire station anymore. So at the end of the town, up here, I can see it. I don't know if this is the longest one. I know the longest one is in Vermont, but this one's pretty long. First, we're gonna go over it, and then I'm gonna get out, take pictures, and show you. This is the second covered bridge I've been in today, because earlier I was in East Corinth, and I was at the Beetlejuice covered bridge. Oh wow, this is pretty long. You gotta be careful here, there's a plaque there's a car coming too. I'm gonna to turn my headlights on. Yeah. This is a National Historic Landmark. Oh my gosh. This is beautiful. So I've been, not this big, almost this long, but I, I was in a bridge like this in Seymour, Indiana. Uh, a couple years ago and I lost my sunglasses that day, my Ray-Bans. This is kind of scary. All right, whoa, this just happened. Okay, it looks like it comes to a T really quick right here, so you gotta make a decision. I'm gonna go to the right. Oh yeah, there is a pull-off spot, that's good. And look at this, signs, 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 and the bridge over there. Okay, wait, 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 let's check out the signs. Also, Lafayette. Another marker there. Oh wow, I've never seen that before. You know how many times I've gotten to poison ivy and seen it, but never seen a warning sign? Especially in Florida, all we have are alligator warning signs. That's cool. Built in 1866 at the cost of $9,000. How about that for inflation? This is the longest wooden bridge in the United States and the longest two-span covered bridge in the world. The fourth bridge is at this site. The 460 foot structure was built by Bella J. Fletcher uh, at Claremont and James F. Tasker of Cornish using a lattice truss patent by architect Ethel Town in 1820 and 1835. Built as a toll bridge by a private corporation, the span was purchased by the state of New Hampshire in 1936 and made toll free in 1943. I just realized, I, th I think I just entered New Hampshire. We're on the New Hampshire side. 
Oh, okay. And there it is, the bridge we just traveled over into New Hampshire. Beautiful Windsor Bridge. Now, it's a two-span bridge. This is the world's longest covered two-span bridge, wooden covered. It, this is a span right here, just to show you. One, two. Now, I've been on the United States' longest three-span bridge. That's the bridge that I was referencing earlier in Seymour, Indiana. It, it's probably just a little less than this, but it's three spans. But it, it's pretty close. I have never seen such a wonder. This is, this is amazing. This is definitely longer than that one. This is the longest covered bridge I've ever been in. There are several bridges around America like this one, but this is the longest. It's incredible. And right there, it was a toll bridge, and the old sign says, walk your horses or pay $2 fine. Okay, so if you didn't get off and walk your horse, you paid two bucks. And I know what you're thinking now, inflation. Here's my two bucks, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I think that would be like 250, maybe $300 today. I don't know, maybe 500. Inflationcalculator.com, uh, it's a thing. All right, I gotta be quick. Could be a car coming. Just wanted to show you. Look at that. Yeah, there's a car. 1866 to 1966, the plaque up there placed 50 years ago. Wow, over 50 years ago. And yeah, I'm gonna have to travel back over it to head back to Vermont, I'm not done there. No, I'm not. Amazing. I ain't walking this car. That's amazing. Yeah, I gotta fill the whole thing. Woo! Oh, turn my lights on. Got my brights on. Doesn't make a difference. This thing's pretty sturdy. Almost to the end. Made it. Hello, Vermont. Second All time right. here this weekend. Okay, so I'm going to the correct town now to film my fourth video this weekend. What a beautiful place, man. Vermont. I'm blown away. And I want to thank my beautiful fiance for making this possible, who I miss so much, for uh, taking care of Bella for me this weekend. Also, she's been out on her own adventures on the Spooky Shopping channel over there. She's doing well, and if you're not subscribed to Chris the Girl on YouTube, my beautiful fiance, who you've seen in the vlog, before or maybe not maybe you're new here go check her out there's a link in the description below we're a youtube couple with two channels some of us uh some people ask are you guys going to combine the channels uh and she'll say the same thing no we're not we both love doing what we do we're never going to combine the channels and i honestly think it's more fun because I get to be in her videos, she gets to be in mine, we get to film different things. Sometimes we film the same thing, but we are both in cahoots always and we both have the same passions and we are both dedicated to what we love and we love each other. And that's what makes this every, so special for us. So thanks for watching here and thanks for watching. I know Chris would say thank you for watching over there too. So yeah, I just want to throw this in here. I'm, I'm missing Chris so much because she's my adventure buddy and nothing is ever the same without her. Giant peaks way up there. I think that's a G. Is that a G or an S? Is it gets mark or sits mark? This sign is awesome. Look at this. It's an old ski shop sign. And check this out. It's an old ski shop. And there's skis still in the window. I don't know if it's just closed for the uh, summer. Someone might still live here. But it, it's cool because this at one point was a ski shop. Very unique building. Yeah, I think someone lives here. There's no one home right now. But yeah, there's definitely skis in the window. That's sick. I love that sign too. Yeah, it's just on the side of the road here. Just west of Windsor. Hello, paradise. Whoa. 
Also, sheep, sheep, sheep. And as we cross this bridge, we come to Brownsville, Vermont. Brownsville. Also known as West Windsor. I got a little confused. I thought where I was is where we are now. Windsor and West Windsor, also known as Brownsville. Very historic little town. And up here on the hill, up here to the left, well, and to the right, is where we're going. And I can understand why someone, anyone, might want to be buried in a spot like this. Look at that view. That is absolutely beautiful. Right here on the north side of Brownsville, West Corinth, West Windsor, this graveyard. Buried here, one of my favorite actors of all time. And that's why I'm out here today. All right. So, I'm gonna put that in another video. But thanks for watching this one. I'll tell you, don't worry. Since you stuck to the end of the video, I really appreciate that. I'm here to visit the grave of Charles Bronson. Great American actor, one of my faves. So I'm gonna film that in another video. It may already be out, it may be coming out next. I'm thinking it might be already out, but go check that out. Again, on the main page of my YouTube channel, you can find all of my videos and also you can subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me here for New England Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places. I am Tampa J, and I've got a two hour drive to Hartford, Connecticut to grab a plane. I should be taking off at like nine o'clock tonight. It's like two o'clock, so I got plenty of time to get there. I'm gonna make this video right here and end this one here, so I'm golden. I thought I was gonna film a little bit of Massachusetts, but the uh, universe sent us in different directions. So here we are, Vermont. It was just too beautiful to pass through and not, not film it. So there it went, fired up the camera. Thanks for joining me. Know you're awesome, know you're loved, and no matter who you are, what you're going through, there's always much ahead here in Vermont and beyond.